King's Landing. Hmm. I want to do this chapter and see what happens. I really like, uh, it's pretty cool. Since John Aaron just died, I don't think we'll see any Starks here. Did the game just freeze? Wow, okay. Man, what the hell? Hello, hell's... my lord. Oh, would you be Lord Sarwick? Say, have you got anything for old Rend? Just a coin for a wounded veteran? I do not remember you, old man. How do you know my name? I worked at Riverspring back in the day, my lord. With all due respect, you've gotten a few wrinkles, but you've not changed much. It has been years since I last set foot in the capital. Any news of late? A lord like you must be interested in the Red Keep. It's up there, on Aegon's High Hill. It's there where you'll find King Robert and his Queen Lannister and all of their court and their knights. It's there that anything of import occurs. The rest of the city is for the small folk. You've got craftsmen, the best in the realm, and whores, also the best. <laughs> you can find just about everything you want in King's Landing. You say you know the people of my house. Do you know my brother? I have come here to see him. No, my lord. I've never seen him in the flesh. It's his people that we know. Especially Hub, the groom. He comes to the taverns to throw back a few pints. And then he talks. He told us that Lord Garwin returned there not long ago to visit his father. And now... Lord Sharwick is dead. There are rumors that your brother is back in town. There's no way to be sure, because Hub has not shown his face in a while. You would almost think the man had lost his thirst for ale. I know enough. Here for your troubles. May you walk in the light of Relore. May the Seven watch over you, my lord. Dark wings, dark words. Sure. Can I sell my ship? That's one thing I haven't done. Fires, latrines, and the tide as well. How could I forget such a bouquet? What? Come take a look. So where's the King's Landing? I'm not sure I want to go there. Probably sh filled with shit from Tyrion Lannister. Uh, what is this? I'm looking for somebody. Oh my, man, the frame rate is really horrible. There he is, Axe. Just like I said. Good job. I'll take care of him. Think you're going somewhere, pretty boy? I see that the cutthroat business continues to flourish. You're not just talking to any old bandits here. We're called the Reapers. Now, Lord Sarwick will come with us quietly. I can be very unpleasant when there's too much noise. If you know who I am, then you know that I am of a noble family. If anything happens to me, the watch will be on your tail for the rest of your miserable lives. That seems a large price to pay for a bounty. Don't worry about us. Once we've gotten the bounty, we'll have more than enough to pay off the city watch. What reward are you talking about? 
You are kin to Garwin Sarwick, are you not? A man worth a hundred gold dragons. It's his bloody brother, I tell you. He has to know. Who would put a bounty of a hundred gold dragons on my brother's head? That's madness. Twas the watch, pretty boy, and none other. Your brother is accused of killing Lord Sarwick of Riverspring. A damn kinslayer. I still fail to understand the link between the reward for my brother and me. No one has put a bounty on my head as far as I know. Perhaps. But you must know where he is. If you don't want to tell us, we'll spread the word that we beat you to a pulp. So your brother will show his face, and then we'll have him. Perhaps under other circumstances it would have been a good plan. But you shouldn't stay too much on it. And why is that? I came to King's Landing to find my murdering brother and to wreak our family's vengeance upon him. Do you truly believe he would come out of hiding to help me? I highly doubt it. Huh. Shit. Wait, Axe, you're not going to let him get away like that. I'm the one who led him to you. What about Cher? Shut it, you old bag of bones. You've caught us a lean hair here. He won't give us a thing. Luck is with you today, pretty boy. We'll let you continue on your way. Let's level up. That's not what I wanted to do. I can summon Relor. Let's go. Sell some stuff, maybe. Merchants, merchants, merchants everywhere.
I'm not wearing any boots. What is this? Where does it say where my where my money at? One seventeen. I don't have a whole lot of money. Lanterns or cloak. So, you were their lookout, were you? Now that they're gone, you're all alone. And you will suffer the consequences of your actions. Oh, please. Oh, please, my lord. I had no choice. Enough. I will not be swayed by your lies. Oh, mercy. Believe me that I'm ashamed, my lord. You were so good to me. I beg of you. Take pity on an old man. With me frail hands made useless by my illness, I can no longer work. When I see a chance to earn a little coin, how can I pass it up? Fire purifies, old man. It doesn't stop when one begs it to do so. Nor do I. Deserve to die, asshole. Go fuck yourself. Man. No. Just trying to find my way to, uh, Cersei Lannister. The Sarwick residence is not far from here. What's going on here? It's the man of the watch. They've come to get Sarwick. The one with the price on his head. Death to the Kinslayer! Hold him! We only found the servants, Lord Wex. Do you jest? There was no one else? No, my lord. Gowan is not here, Sir Velar. Oh. I'm searching for your master, Gowan Sawin. You won't save him, but you can still save yourself. Tell me where he is. We don't know where he is. He's not been here for months. Take him to the Red Keep. No, I haven't done anything. I know nothing. Let me go! Lambert, no! Leave him be! Please, sir! My lord, mercy. Neilsbund is a good man and loyal to the crown. He knows nothing. is restless. Let them be restless. Wex, have this residence watched. I'll let you know if I manage to drag anything out of this land.
The rumors of your return were true. That red priest arriving in the middle of the ceremony like a ghost from the past. That was you. Did you return to go to your brother's execution? Garwin was arrested. Not yet, but it shouldn't be too long. I will personally make sure of it. Do you really need to massacre our servants to find our brother? Oh, so now we're brothers, are we? Yet when we were children, that was out of the question. I was just a bastard in your eyes. Now I serve the Queen, and I have orders to stop your kinslayer of a brother. What is certain is that Garwin's people had nothing to do with the death of our father, Valar. How can you be so sure? Don't worry, though. I'll make them talk. And it's Sir Valar now. Lord Tywin Lannister himself knighted me. I am not surprised. The powerful enjoy surrounding themselves with rabid dogs. I only do what is asked of me, and I'm rewarded in kind. A Lannister always pays his debts. Yes. But at what price? So, tell me, how is it that the Crown personally gave you this task? This task is normally for the Watch, but the Queen personally requested that one of her trusted men settle this matter. After all, you made me endure when we were young. Rest assured that it is a pleasure to have been given this task. Moreover, Garwin could have gotten in my way as the legitimate heir. But once he's lost his head, I doubt he'll bother me again. Don't count on it, Valar. I have returned, and I intend to keep you from perpetrating your crimes. Whatever claims and duties you had towards the Sarwick family, you turned your back on them long ago. River Spring will soon be mine, and no one will stop me. You are bastard born, Valar. You cannot legitimately become a lord. Of course, the bastard must keep silent while the true-born son speaks. Seems too easy, does it not? Whatever happens, I shall be the Lord of Riverspring. And yet, you cannot ignore that I am betrothed to your sister, Eliana. By all the laws of the realm, Riverspring will go to me when we are wed, and there is nothing you can do about that. As you can see, the interests of the Sarwicks will soon be my own dear big brother. It was time someone took care of them. I heard of this charade. Don't delude yourself too much, Valar. I shall put a stop to it. This alliance was decided by the Crown itself, and Eliana fully consented. You see, it's all been taken care of. Like for Garwin, who will be found and judged for his crime. It is the royal will, Alistair. It would not be prudent to oppose it. The Crown will first hear what I have to say. I will go and request an audience, and we shall see about my brother and this marriage. You're going after Garwin. You plan on marrying Eliana. From one day to the next, you go from a bastard without a lineage to being an heir to Riverspring. Don't try to convince me that you're content to go along with the royal will. This isn't going to lead me anywhere. Once my rights have been re-established, I will once again be Lord Sarwick. And I will find my brother. Don't count on it. I'm in charge of the matter. The Sarwick Mans will remain sealed until further notice. The City Watch will keep an eye on it, so stay away from this house. Do not get in my way, Alistair, I'm warning you. Trust me, we will meet again. Tell me, I saw you in the hands of the Gold Cloaks earlier. You are a servant of Garwin, are you not? Leave me be. I've done nothing wrong. I'm no one. I know nothing. Calm down. I am not with them. I mean you no harm. No harm? That's what they told Janna as well, while they dragged us outside. Poor Janna. She may have been a poxy bitch, who was always haranguing me about my heavy drinking. But she didn't deserve what she got. In the mother's name, she didn't deserve what she got. When Master Garwin sees the misfortune that has befallen his poor household, he will not be happy. He'll be enraged, more like. 
About that. I am Alistair Sarwick, his brother. I am here to find him. Tell me what has happened here. Oh, in the Father's name, for me, Master Gawain's brother. A thousand pardons, my lord. I, I didn't know. My name is Hub, your brother's groom. With all due respect, he did not discuss family often. If truth be told, he never mentioned having a brother. How could it be otherwise? Garwin was not but a child when I left Riverspring. How so? I won't dally on this matter any longer, Groom, but note that I am here to help. Please, tell me what happened. The City Watch entered the home by force and demanded to speak with the Master, but they did not find him. It had been a long time since we'd seen him here anyway. He sometimes sent us instructions. We received the letter not long ago. The steward Lambert kept it. He knew how to read, he did. That's actually why they took him away. He knew a bit more than the others. The mother, take pity on him. That seems important. Did the steward mention the letter's contents? Aye, he said that Lord Garwin was headed to King's Landing, and that we had to prepare for his arrival. But judging from the face he made, there was something else written, and not good tidings. Do you know what has happened to the letter? The gold cloaks ransacked the house. It must be lost somewhere in the jumble. I must also warn you that a woman's letter arrived the other day. Perfumed and all. Lambert made that one disappear right quickly. He said it was Master Garwin's private affairs, and that it wasn't to be gossiped about. What did he do with it? Lambert hid all important documents in a special hiding place. It's in his room, upstairs. Interesting. With a little luck, the watch won't have found it. I need those letters. Did you see the gold cloaks at the door, my lord? It's dangerous. Garwin had quite a head start on me. He should have arrived in King's Landing long ago. You say he never came here? No, my lord. And he did well not to. The men of the City Watch keep coming to ask questions about him. They told us that Lord Garwin was a criminal. They even promised a pile of gold for his head. Since then, all of King's Landing's wretches have spread the word. Yesterday, three of them even tried to beat me into telling them where he was. Lambert wouldn't let me leave the house after that. And today, the gold cloaks arrived as if they knew the Master had returned. But they're wrong. No one here has seen him. I have to go and look inside. The men of the Watch guard the entrance. Do you know another way in? Mm, perhaps. The service trapdoor leading to the cellar behind the house. Would that do? Are the men of the City Watch not watching it? I have no idea. But it's Garwin they were interested in, not the house itself. Let us go. Show me the way. Very well. But let us pick up the pace. I have no desire to remain here. Let's pick up the pace. Go, 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 go. Go, go, go. Hold on a second. The masses are fickle, are they not? Just a moment ago, they all cried out against the traitors, wanting a share of their blood. The woman dies and they turn away, horrified, suddenly pious. <laughs> if you want my opinion, this is a perfect example of human hypocrisy. That woman was guilty of nothing. The people don't like it when some soldier gets away with killing an innocent in broad daylight. It might very well be their turn tomorrow. Whether or not they deserve it, they won't be able to do a thing to stop it. It is not a pleasant notion. An interesting idea, my lord. I think, though, that they'll quickly try to forget this incident. In a week or in a month, they'll come enjoy the next execution with the same eagerness. And here I am, wagging my tongue. <laughs> I've already kept you too long, my lord. May the Seven guard you.
you can spare my old. Not eaten for three days. Jesus Christ. Going to die. Yay. Well, it's going great. I think that means it's time to th stop. <laughs> oh my god, that was a save. Really? Holy shit. Really? Holy Tell me, shit. I saw you in the hands of Leave me be. I've done nothing wrong. I'm no one. My name is Hub. Your brother's group. That's actually why they took him away. What the Did you see the gold cloaks at the very Hold on a second, what happened here? I lose him. Please, thank you. No, oh my God, is is there three of them? Oh, that did it. Twenty-eight 
was a good thing that you were here. Holy crap. Here we are. Do you see the trapdoor over there? It leads into the cellar. Practical and discreet. I've used it many a time coming home from the tavern. And not a guard in sight. Perfect. I'll take it over from here. Once you're down there, climb to the ground floor. Careful, the cellar is somewhat badly lit. Lambert had his papers in his quarters. In a small recess behind an old shield. The woman's letter should be there. As for the other... Well, now, I don't know what to tell you. Check all the rooms. It must be somewhere. I'll find it. Not to worry. May the seven be with you, Lord. We'll finish this quest and then uh, call it a day, guys. Go if I could pick up that axe. Axe me anything. Get it? RDRR. No, this door opens onto the square. Not exactly a discreet exit. I don't want to exit, dude. as big as as I thought it would be our manse was ransacked the city watch really had a field day I see. It would appear that my little brother developed an infatuation for one of Shataya's whores. I must pay her a... Unbelievable. We have guards at every entry point, but there's always a rat who manages to crawl in. Come on, men. There's vermin to get rid of here. Should I have no more flasks?
Here's the ways. These boots are better. Hi. Oh, no. Shut eyes. It's a whorehouse, right? Now here's a visitor who brings back pleasant memories. Is that really you, Sir Alistair? It has been a long time, Shatire. It has been years since you honored us with your presence. It's been so long, I thought you'd lost interest in Houses of Pleasure. You weren't wrong about that. My eyes have been opened to the light of Relore, and I took up the red robes of priesthood. The gods gave us voices with which to sing their praises hands to build their temples, and desire to honor them through our lovemaking. You haven't changed, Shataya, but I have. Excellent. If there's anything I can do to lighten your worries, it would be my pleasure. Just ask. I'm looking for a certain Felena. Is she one of the girls in this house? Felena is one of my most enchanting girls. And she is well educated. She will be just impertinent enough to please you, my dear. I'm surprised that you know her. I learned that she was um, rather close to my brother. Of course. I should have known. Gowan very much enjoyed Felena's attentions. Would you care to spend some time in her pleasant company? It would be a pleasure. Do go upstairs. Her room is at the end of the corridor on the left. She has been rather sad as of late. 
Perhaps you will succeed in comforting her. I'll see what I can do. Well, this isn't Game of Thrones, we're not naked. Many pardons, my lord, but are you not Sir Alistair Sarwick? I heard tell that you had returned to the Seven Kingdoms. Indeed. You appear to know much about me. To whom do I have the honor of speaking? I realize that my impromptu intervention might have startled you, my lord, but pray do not take umbrage. The return of a war hero could not help but attract my attention. Particularly when his return proves to be so... ostentatious. I won no honors in the war, just scars. But you have yet to introduce yourself. Your modesty does you honor, my lord. You forged quite a name for yourself fighting for King Robert in his rebellion. Excuse my rudeness. I have not yet told you my name. I am Lord Varys, and I hope you will count me as a friend. We never crossed paths 15 years ago, but perhaps you have heard of me? Lord Varys, pardon me, but you scarcely look like a lord dressed thus. Besides, your name does not sound familiar. One in my position is often gratified to go unrecognized. The disguise you see before you has been of great help to me. At the time of Robert Baratheon's rebellion, I was master of whispers to King Aerys Targaryen. It was my duty to keep an eye on the rising leaders within the rebel faction. That is how you attracted my attention. Indeed. I remember now. We rebels called you the Spider. Some of our lords were wary of you. You made some enemies along the way. Alas, the people of the Seven Kingdoms have little affection for eunuchs. All of those noble knights and grand lords are loath to risk their reputations with informers and spies. But in the Game of Thrones, information is power. Those who most despise us are often the first to benefit from our whispers. Please pardon my curiosity, Lord Varys, but I find it surprising to see a person of your ilk frequenting houses of ill repute. Well, there are a thousand little nothings to be learned in this sort of establishment. Whores make men talkative, you understand. And since King Robert was kind enough to keep me in my position, I have much to do here. It would really surprise me if our meeting were purely chance. Indeed, but my intentions are good. I wanted to discuss the Baratheon Rebellion. Why not? There is one question that I have never been able to be free of. Do you believe that the Rebellion was a good thing, after all is said and done? Is King Baratheon a better king than Targaryen? Old King Aerys was mad, my lord. Mad and cruel, that no one can deny. His habit of burning the great people of the kingdom alive could only bring him to ruin. After that, any idiot could have passed for a good king. As for his majesty, Robert, his subjects loved him. Of that I have little doubt, but he pays little heed to matters of the realm and remains blind to the enemies around him. I fear that a new storm brews on the horizon. Does that knowledge make you regret your part in the Rebellion? Some good came of it all the same. I find comfort in telling myself that all was not done in vain. 
You were just one young knight amongst hundreds of others, and Tywin Lannister was always a demanding master. He dragged you into that war, and you carried out your duty as a bannerman. At the time, Lord Tywin wanted a foot in each camp. When he ordered us to fight for Robert, I chose to follow his orders. Yes. Why such bitterness, my friend? You fought valiantly. And, more importantly, you were on the winning side. You could have brought renown, fortune, and glory to your house, if you had so wished. And yet, when the time came to reap the benefits of your efforts, you turned away and left Westeros. I admit that I do not understand why. The rebellion was not nearly as noble as it is portrayed in the tales and songs. You yourself know that. It is one thing to face an armed enemy. It is quite another to attack those who are already vanquished. Let us say that the last orders that I received left a bad taste in my mouth. I prefer to go. I did not want glory won in that manner. It was a courageous decision, sir. It is often easy to forget that it is our choice whether or not to obey. Perhaps it would interest you to learn that your old squire, Valar, did not spurn the honors as you did. Lord Tywin Lannister covered him in gold and knighted him to reward him for his exploits and his unfailing loyalty. For his unspeakable brutality, you mean to say? I had the opportunity to behold his work again in the square. Such a wild beast should not be left to roam free, much less granted a command. It is an invitation to disaster. Have a care, my friend. Sir Valor has become an important member of the court. He is a faithful supporter of Queen Cersei's. And he could cause you great harm if you were to make him an enemy. I strongly recommend that you avoid making such remarks in public. Valar is not only my old squire, he is also my half-brother. He may very well be as poisonous as an asp, but he cannot silence me. Not today, not ever. I hope for your sake that you know what you're doing, my friend. Now, I'm afraid that I must beg your leave. Please excuse me. I'm afraid that my little birds are always chirping and demanding my attention. Make the most of your stay with Chatia. Yeah? Mm -hmm. I hope to see you again soon. Ah, bears. <laughs> I like that guy. He's cool enough. You are Felena, if I'm not mistaken. Shataya said that I might find you here. You are not mistaken, my lord. How might I please you? A one-on-one -on -one will be enough to satisfy me. Preferably far from prying ears. My lord needs only close the door. At Shatayas, the walls are thick and the beds are deep. Slow down. I just want to speak with you. Oh, in that case, it will be done according to my lord's pleasure. I am Alistair of House Sarwick. I imagine that means something to you. Sarwick? By the Maiden. You are from Garwin's family, are you not? Did he send you? How is he? When will he return? By Relor's flame. Why are you so concerned with my brother's fate? My lord, I know the realities of my profession. Shataya treats us well, but in a few years I will be too old to draw men's eyes. And what awaits me then? Begging or walking the docks? I wish for Lord Garwin to take me into his service. Not to marry him. I'm not that naive. But he has always been attentive and charming. He will make a good master. He and I have talked about this. I understand your worries. But all of this does not tell me where he is. You recently sent him a love letter. You seem to be aware of his movements. Yes, my lord. Lord Garwin told me he was going to Riverspring in order to visit his father. Lambert, his servant, would send me news. He told me that Lord Garwin planned to return to King's Landing shortly, so that he wouldn't forget to pay me a visit. I sent him a message. He came here? Yes, but my message was for naught. 
He came directly here soon after his arrival in town. He found out that the city watch was looking for him. It was I who washed the dust of travel from him. He did not even go to his home first. Well thought. Knowing that the gold cloaks were likely watching the house, coming here was a good decision. He was very nervous. He hardly spoke to me that night. I tried to ask him questions about the patricide rumors, but they only made him angry. The last thing he said was that he would go to the Red Keep, that the Crown would hear what he had to say and that he had more than one card to play. He left at the first light of dawn. I have had no news since and the gold cloaks continue to search for him. Something must have gone wrong. What do you plan to do, my lord? The city watchers searched for him in vain for days. Even Lord Varus does not know his whereabouts and Lord Varus knows all. You spoke of Garwin with the eunuch. Why? What did he want? He asked me questions, my lord. Nearly the same ones you did. He said he wanted to help him. Strange. Why would the Master of Whisperers want to help a fugitive escape the King's justice? I don't know why, but Lord Varus has always been good to us here. He has given us many reasons to be thankful for his attention. As far as he knows, the City Watch never caught Lord Garwin. The Gold Cloaks have nothing to do with his disappearance. Yes, I thought so. They came to search the Sarwick residence and are still looking for him. I will go to the Red Keep and see if I can find out more about him. Wait. This cloak belongs to Lord Garwin. He forgot it. Take it, please. By the fire! That's Sarwick Guiltwaters. I remember seeing Father wear it on many a special occasion. Indeed, a cloak is more appropriate for a royal interview. I wasn't expecting to find it in this place. Lord Garwin wore it when he would come to visit. Since he was a wanted man, he feared it would attract too much attention, so he preferred leaving it here. I am sure he would be happy to know that the cloak is in the hands of a kinsman. This cloak is worth a fortune. How kind of you to return it to me. You're making me blush. Frankly, I'm uncomfortable keeping this cloak in my residence. If the gold cloaks were to find it, I could get into trouble. Take it, please. It's yours. I pray to the Maiden to help you in your search. Find Garwin, my lord. Bring him back safe and sound. I would need more than the help of an imaginary goddess. But I appreciate the intention, as I'm sure my brother does as well. Farewell, Felina. That's him. Halt, sir. In the name of the Crown, I arrest you. What is it I stand accused of, officer? You are accused of murder. Guards from the City Watch were killed in your home just today. I returned home, and your men attacked me for no reason. I didn't wish to fight, but your men wouldn't hear reason. Follow us peaceably, and we'll clear things up in the Red Keep. The King's justice concerns everyone, my lord, even people of your standing. Give yourself up. What will become of him? He will be stripped of his weapons and brought to the dungeons of the Red Keep. If he's found guilty, tradition allows him to choose his own punishment. He will either be sent to the Wall to take the Black, or be beheaded. Now that's an amusing notion. And if you should be foolish enough to resist, my men are just outside, and they would eagerly welcome a chance to avenge their brothers in arms. A simple gesture from me, and this brothel will be left in ruins. Sir Alistair, I pray, none of that here. Think of my girls. Very well, officer. I'll follow you. Oh, there you go. Looks like a damn wolf. Courage, Alistair. Courage. A few days spent in the dungeons of the Red Keep won't be the death of me. They're bound to send me someone to speak with. Hello, Lord Sarwick. Lord Varys? It is too bad these surroundings are not as pleasant as our last encounter. How has your stay been? Long. I had expected a quick trial when the men of the City Watch came to arrest me. 
I was mistaken. You are the first person to come and visit me. Why are you here? Usually my only visitors are rats. You see, the fact that you don't seem to care about yourself rather pleases me. Your escape will go unnoticed for quite some time. My escape? Someone decided to help me out of here. I am here to serve you, my Lord Sarwick. What could you possibly gain from that? The balance of the Seven Kingdoms is delicate, and I predict more upheaval to come. It is clear that you have a role in what is to come. Thank you for your concern, but I refuse to leave these cells as a fugitive. I prefer to await my trial and defend my name before the Crown. You are quite the optimist. I am sorry if I've ruined your plans. I intend to meet with the Queen. I must take back Riverspring and keep that traitor Valar from getting his hands on it. To do that, my name must be cleared. Otherwise, how can I plead my case before the Queen? Cleared? You've killed Goldcloaks, my friend. Who has accused me? One of Valar's soldiers? Then it will be my word against his. I see. It may not go as smoothly as you imagine. Believe me when I tell you that it will be several more weeks before your trial. In the meantime, Savala will have wed your sister. Valar is the one who truly preoccupies you, is he not? That's why you're here, making this proposal. Only the kingdom preoccupies me, my friend. That said, we may find common ground. I'm listening. I can get you an audience with the Queen. Today, if you wish it. I doubt that a fugitive would be allowed to approach her, much less speak to her. You only knew Cersei Lannister as a naive young princess, dear man. Since her marriage, she has become a strong-willed queen with a burning ambition, well-versed in intrigue. She has been filling the court with her creatures for years now. So? Thus, the virtue she prizes above all else is loyalty, which she rewards generously. That is how Savala moved up in court, and therein, paradoxically, lies your opportunity. Swear blind allegiance to the Queen, become her devoted servant, and she will give you what you desire. And you believe that Valar will just sit there and allow me to thwart his ambitions? Oh, I doubt that very much. It is quite likely that he will strike back at you eventually, but in front of the Queen, he won't dare to use force. Of course, he will try to remind her of her commitments, but she has never been capable of the same loyalty that she demands of her men. Impress her, make yourself more desirable than your rival, and you will win. Is Valar sly enough to have wronged the master of Whisperers himself? Your half-brother is much more intelligent than he appears. And he has a powerful ally who has begun to move her pawns forward. As for the details, those are my concern. Excellent, Varys. How do you plan on getting me out of here? As you may imagine, I have no desire to be seen in the company of a fugitive when I go back up. You'll have to manage on your own. Here is the key to your cell. Once I've left, you will leave and head towards the guardroom. You will find the guard asleep at his post. I'll wager that he was served a particularly strong glass of wine. Very well. And the others? Surely the King's prisons are not guarded by just one drunk man. Don't worry. In the very depths of the Red Keep, there are paths known only to ghosts and spiders. If such ways exist, then I doubt you're the only one to know of them. I imagine they've been here for centuries. Indeed. When the Red Keep was built, King Magor the Cruel made certain that the fortress walls were all connected by a vast network of secret passages. These passages allowed his spies to see and hear everything that occurred in every room in the Keep. It is said that Magor had every man who worked on its construction executed in order to keep the passages secret. Apparently that was not enough. Indeed. But don't forget, Lord Sarwick, it is my duty to stay informed. I am the only one who knows all of its entrances and the full extent of its meanderings. I see. Then tell me how to access the throne room. 
Pass by the row of cells across from yours. Look for the one with the flagstone on the floor bearing the sigil of the Targaryen dragon. It is a passage towards the tunnels. Past that point, be on your guard. Very well, but do not expect my gratitude. I'm sure that helping me serves your plans. I will await you at the end of the passage to give you access to the throne room where you will meet the Queen. Good luck, Lord Alistair, and I will see you soon. By the flame. It's our quartermaster. So he's the one I heard yelling. May Relor welcome him to his light. Wine's too strong, eh? Obviously Varys truly knows how to live. I have no armor. I'm gonna fucking die. guys i'm kind of a little tired of playing this so i'll do another um maybe another one of these i don't know we'll see so thanks for watching everybody and i'll see you uh i'll see you soon later